the like button, hit the sub button, hit the notification bell. You understand me? Subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Join this Fisk Unit Army and get Fisk Unit tough. All right, look. Shout out to Colin Johnson, man. He was a good dude. He really would have started for us last year if he didn't get hurt. Because he had a better camp than um Kenny Galladay did. <clears throat> he had a better camp than Kenny Galladay. So, shout out to him. I'm sure somebody's going to pick him up. But the truth of the matter is, last year was his, was his opportunity. It just wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be. Colin Johnson would have been great for us last year. All them practice squad players, hell. That $12 million that Darius Slayton got probably could have been Colin Johnson's. Because we can agree he's probably a better receiver than Darius Slayton. So instead of Darius Slayton having his season last year, probably would have been Colin Johnson. So, you know, shit happens. I feel bad for the kid. So I hope, I hope he lands on his feet. And I hope everything goes well for him. And, you know, look, Slayton's a nice guy. All right, shout out to Darius Slayton. He's such a nice guy. I ain't mean to throw shade at him. I ain't mean to do that. You know, got to gotta protect the nice guys out there. Um, Look, obviously Saquon's back. And we drafted Gray in the fifth round. And Breida is Breida. I we knew James Robinson wasn't going to make the team the minute Saquon came back. The only reason why he was on the team to begin with is because Saquon was moving funny in July. So we ain't want to take no chances. It is what it is. I hope James Robinson lands on his feet because he's young. He's talented. He had a great game yesterday versus the Jets. And I'm sure somebody can use James Robinson. You know, I mean, he's not bad. He just hasn't had the right opportunity. Hasn't had the right coaching staff. So, I'm sure he'll land on his feet. And then, obviously, say the most horrifying news for last. <sighs> Damn, man. Marcus Ford Wheaton tore his ACL. Which, it, it, it sucks. Because, you know, he's baby Megatron. You know, he's got the moss type highlights and you know we was looking forward to seeing him make the team because he was going to be our gunner i'm confident he was going to make the teams as a special teams player and he would have got snaps and wild to see especially in the end zone you know so i feel bad for the guy but he he he'll have a chance to make the roster next year as well he's a special teams guy so he's not competing with wandale and Hyatt and Slayton and Hodgins. He's not competing with those guys. He was trying to make the teams as a special teams player. So if I'm his agent, if I'm a close friend of his, I'm telling him to cheer up, man. Like, everything's going to be fine for him. If he could continue to improve on special teams next season, he'll make the team. It's one of those situations. It's not like a Colin Johnson situation where you tear your ACL this year you might not cut the mustard the next year because we brought in more competition. Ain't much competition for the gunner spot on special teams. Let's just call that shit what it is. It was Jason Pinnock and um, some other guy who's been injured. I forgot his damn name already. See, that just validates my point. It was a three-man race for that position on special teams. And Pinnock is our starting safety. So it got dropped to a two-man race. So, I mean, it's not like he's coming back trying to compete for a loaded spot here. Like, I feel bad for the guy, but, you know, it ain't the end of the world here. Now, one of the things that I, I, I talked about it, but I didn't talk about it last, yesterday in the Jets' reaction. Listen, our offensive line is ass. Our offensive line is straight ass, okay? If any of our starters get hurt, Daniel Jones needs to be benched. Okay, I'm not joking. I'm not doing this for shock. I am not trying to get clicks. Listen, Matt Pert is garbage. Shane Lemieux is garbage. The backup line is trash. DeVito, 
Tyrod did not stand a chance yesterday. They was getting fucked up. Pert is buns. He is a bum. And I get mad at Gettleman and Joe Judge because they told us that Pert and Lemieux was the future. They told us this. We really went into a season that hoping that Pert and Lemieux was going to be healthy. Really? How far have we come? Pause. So I just, the backup offensive line spot, we need to be looking on the waiver wire to fix that. There's got to be some linemen around the league getting cut. Somebody on the Eagles can't make the team, damn it. Eagles and Cowboys stay with some backup linemen that could put some work in. We need to go poach from the Eagles and the Cowboys because I know their backups has got to be better than ours. I mean, hell, the Eagles got backups that people think should be starting in the first damn place. So I'm sorry, but the, it, the backup, I can't believe I'm actually talking about backup offensive linemen. What the hell is going Look. Andrew Thomas, I'm cool with. Smiths, we have no history of, so I'm just going to go on the limit and I'm cool with that. Evan Neal, on the other hand, he was hurt last year. He got hurt this year in camp. Evan Neal might be fragile. He might be a big, brittle bone nigga. I don't know. But if Perk comes into the game, we lost. I'm sorry. Like, if Perk comes into the game, we lost. There's no way we could put Perk out there. In a real game that matters. Could you imagine Pert going up against Makai Parsons? Uh, don't we play the 49ers in week two? Can you imagine him going up against Bosa? Get the fuck out of here, bro. Evan Neal need to stay healthy. If Evan Neal or Andrew Thomas or Smiths get hurt, we in trouble. We are in trouble. Them niggas is ass. Damn. Oh, uh, now. And whoever in my comment section. So somebody came into my comment section. I think it was the third preseason, the second preseason game. And I shitted on Matt Pert. He came into my comment section. Was, Yo, Fist, man, you being too mean to Pert. You got to give Pert a chance. He can develop. He can be the next Darius Slate. And my black ass. Damn that. He need to be cut. We don't need that bad juju on our offensive line. One dude, you can't hide him. You can't hide him, bro. It's bad. So I fully expect Joe Shane to be working the waiver wires because dudes is getting cut today. So I fully expect Shane to be working around the waiver wires trying to figure this out. But um, all in all, Sills is still alive. And Tyrod Taylor got to go. I'm going to be honest with y'all. The last thing we need to talk about is Tyrod Taylor. DeVito should be the second quarterback. Tyrod is ass too. It's a lot of ass going on around here. And not the ass that I'm used to filming for my videos. This is just a bad ass. This fat boy who sit at home, play Call of Duty, and eat Cheetos type of ass going on with Tyrod and his backup offensive line. Okay? Tyrod got to go. We need it. Period. DeVito is the second quarterback in my book. I don't know how y'all feel about that, but DeVito is the backup quarterback. Tyrod got to go. So we need to get rid of Tyrod, get rid of Pert, and yeah, and put my condolences to the players that got hurt and got cut today. My condolences. Other than that, that's it. That's all. Church of Giants on Monday, tomorrow, all right, tomorrow, 8 o'clock, Church of Giants, y'all know what it be. That's it, that's all. Subscribe to the unit if you're rocking with me. My name is Fist Vegas, and I'll pull this message.